I will be perfectly honest, when I first learned of Sarah's addiction, I kind of kept it to the family. I let my family know what was going on, but I'm not quite sure. I, I thought it was just very personal and maybe something that you didn't share for, you know, to, to people that you're not super close with. I also wanted to respect Sarah's privacy. I didn't want to announce anything she wasn't comfortable with. Um, but I will have to say that even though I was having my own struggles, just trying to be her mom through this, you know, her long journey, um, I only reached out to some close friends. Um, I just wasn't sure how they would react. I'm Terry Everett. I'm Sarah Everett's mom. I created the group Anchored in Hope in her honor with Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel, uh, Rachel Sullivan. I'm Sarah Everett's best friend, um, and Terry and I started Anchored in Hope together in honor of our girl Sarah. Our girl Sarah. Sarah often was by herself. And I believe that if she had had more connections, she would have at least had an easier time of it. Um, she would come and sit on this rock and she would journal or do her uh, mandalas with the coloring just to kind of focus and kind of get her mind off of things. And yeah, okay. She was a very spiritual person. Um, she loved to journal, meditate, um, color. She loved crystals. She loved learning about chakras, and um, she was a massage therapist. She just was the most beautiful soul. Um, and we used to come here and just sit, and I know she would come here alone and journal and sit, um, but this was one of our most favorite peaceful places. Um, even when she was struggling the worst, you know, she would call me up and say, hey, can you meet me at our spot? And I would come down here, you know, and just be with her. Yeah. And just, you know, tell her it was gonna be okay and that we, we could figure it out. She had been struggling. I knew things were going on, but just never assumed um, that things were as bad as they were. Yeah. She didn't want me to know. She didn't want to hurt me. Yeah. So she hid it, but um, the signs became so apparent um, as she struggled with her addiction that it couldn't be hidden anymore. So the day she told me, we got her um, into a recovery program up in Vermont. And that became, became her journey of going to, um, unfortunately, many rehabs. I think it was too short of a process. They would take her in and you'd get four weeks and then she was expected to enter society again. And it just, I don't think it was, um, a long enough program. I know things have changed a little bit recently um, about having more opportunities. I think more connection would have been very helpful for her. I needed just something. It was like too much time on my hands or more thoughts in my mind. And I decided um, that I would help the homeless in her honor. So that's where Anchored in Hope was born. So that's been my biggest vehicle of my own um, kind of recovery, recovery from grief and my journey. Grief never ends, but um, Anchored in Hope has helped me with the healing process. It is just for myself so healing to help others. It just takes my thoughts of grief off of myself and it helps me to think about others, which makes me feel happier and like I've done something meaningful. And also to honor Sarah, this is the only way I can show her now that I love her. So just to honor her, every time I talk to her afterwards, I'm like, did you see that person? We really helped them today. The people in our community too giving has been yeah. the 
a huge part of it as well because if without them we wouldn't have been able to do right. as much as we can absolutely um, there have been so many generous donations yes and people you know ordering stuff off of our amazon wish list right um and just dropping stuff off saying hey when can i drop this off when can i drop that off so that's been really so helpful and so amazing and we couldn't do it without all of right people. absolutely i think people need to understand that it is a disease and maybe educate themselves a little bit and i think at the crux of it is that regardless of your stance on that it's their fault their choice or it is a disease that these are human beings that are suffering so what does your heart tell you to do? We're not ashamed of Sarah's right. struggles and we're not ashamed of what she's been through. Um, she's been, she was gone through some really horrible, horrible things during her time when she was actively using, but we're not ashamed. Right. And we're so proud of her strength. We're able to teach other people right. um, and open their eyes and show them that this could be your best friend, your sister your right. daughter, your son, your brother. Um, it's not just people that are living on the street. Absolutely. It can be, you know, your closest best friend. You might not even know yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good point. That's another misconception that it's the homeless or people living in poverty. And that's certainly not true. Sarah was brought up with fabulous morals and she was a good girl and she had beautiful friends and family who loved her and you know, I show her face sometimes and say, is this the face of addiction? I don't, you know, it could be anybody. You know, she's a beautiful, beautiful girl. And, you know, so strong, so strong. So strong. Yeah. And what a fighter. These are lovely people, yeah. you know, and they may be using and they may have mental illness and they may have other issues, but who doesn't have issues? Yeah. You know, and these people are worthy of kindness and compassion. I saw your advertisements for 10,000 Candles for New Hampshire last year, and we actually went to the vigil in Manchester. Um, I like doing different events personally just to honor my daughter, you know, to say we're thinking of you, we haven't forgotten you, we love you, we want to show this to you by attending this. I also loved your message of connection because I know isolation is a huge part of addiction. And I know that impacted Sarah quite a bit. I think if she could have had more connection with people, organizations, recovery groups, I think she would have had an easier time of it, having those connections. So that kind of um, rang true with me when I saw that. Um, I liked the piece that 10,000 Candles offers hope. You can li listen to all these um, different stories and maybe learn, or listen to these people talking about recovery and maybe learn. But also giving me a chance to grieve with other people grieving with the same thing I'm grieving with. I'm not by myself. You know, we're together in this. So I guess the, the togetherness piece really rang true for me. Not only togetherness for myself to be able to openly grieve with other parents, but the togetherness piece that you promote for everybody suffering from these disorders. So that's what drew me to your organization.